Hello and welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast, YouTube edition. I am your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today we are going to dive into how to tie one of the most useful knots out there today. If this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. All right, well, thank you everyone for tuning into today's episode. Today, like I said, we are talking about how to tie a bowline. Now, obviously, I said one of the most useful knots in the industry and not necessarily the rope axis industry, but just the, one of the most useful knots out there to date. Uh, the bowline can be used in so many different ways it can be used to attach a rope to a structure it can be used to tie a rope to a log or to a front of a vehicle it can be used to tie rope onto the end of a load so you can hoist it up so just like this if i wanted to i can just tie a bowline on and then pull up something from the ground um and it is something that can be used um, almost virtually anywhere and it's extremely user friendly and easy to tie. So today I'm going to be showing you a couple different ways to tie this knot and kind of talk to you about the, um, the different variations of this knot. Now obviously there are a thousand one ways to do this. Obviously there are a thousand and one ways and people have their own explanations and stuff like that. I'm gonna give you my version of this and you kind of take it from there. All right, so what do we have here? Um, this is just your standard bowline. Now I have it attached to a sling and a carabiner here, obviously, because you know it makes sense, it's easy, and that's what I have right now. now the nice thing about this is it's essentially very much so a friction based knot so as i pull on here it is pinching on these two strands here and that's holding everything in place okay <clears throat> this loop here can be really big it can be really small it doesn't really matter and the tail is also variable um, but just like every knot you want to make sure you have a good handful of tail for every knot that you tie okay this is not a knot that's trained in irata rope access um, i do believe it's trained in a lot of sprat courses um, and then various other industries i know in the fire service it is something that's trained and as a tradesperson this is a one of the most common knots that we use for everything so you know why not introduce it more into the rope access industry so that's why we're here today now for me um to untie it obviously all we're going to do is just pull the one strand the tail out and it just comes undone it doesn't actually matter how much load you put on this knot it will always come undone that is the amazing thing about it now in my years of using this knot, I've never had one come undone on me. Now, I'll talk about how we can, you know, back it up and, and, and tie it off. Um, some industries do allow it to be used as a termination knot, as an end knot. Um, but in the rather rope access scheme, it's not a recognized knot or an improved knot for this. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you have to do your risk assessment. Your company has to do the risk assessment on things. And I'm not telling you to go out and use it as an end knot or a termination knot for life load, but you can definitely use this to, you know, pick bags up off the ground. Anyways, so how do we tie this knot? The most common way people talk about tying this knot is you're going to create a loop. So there's my loop. I'm gonna take the tail, I'm gonna feed that into the loop from the top side here in this case. I'm gonna go around the tree and then back through the loop and that will give me that bowline, okay? That is kind of the most common way. So rabbit goes into the hole, around the tree and then back out the hole. Um, now, 
Nine times out of 10, I'm not gonna tie it that way, but that's myself personally, okay? Um, another way that you can tie this knot here is you're gonna take this, you rotate this, okay? We're gonna create a slip knot. So I'm gonna take the, the strand here, the load strand if you will, <clears throat> feed that up through, and I'm gonna take this and put this through the top side. Now every time that this rolls over, there's my bowline. So like I said, just like everything else out there, there's a thousand and one ways to tie these knots. Now, one thing that, you know, I noticed a lot of people ridicule me over is where does this tail lie? Is it on the inside or the outside? So in this orientation right now, it's on the inside of the loop. But if I tie this another way, this exact same way, but instead of going over the top, I go through the bottom. Now the tail comes on the outside of the loop. Now, which one's better, which one's worse? To be honest, I don't have those numbers. Am I worried about it? Absolutely not. The only way that it makes it um, critical for me is if I want to tie it off with a Yosemite tie off. Now, if I had a long tail here, okay, I wouldn't be able to do a Yosemite tie off with this being on the outside, but if I had a longer tail, I'd be able to just tie it off with a fisherman's knot. Okay, so there we go. We got, so now I'm going to do the barrel knot or the fisherman's, whatever you want to call it. And that is a viable way to tie it off. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so basically I have the, the bowline line like we had. We had a really long tail. And then I just tied the uh, barrel knot or the fisherman's knot around the loop of the knot. Okay, great option. Absolutely. Cool. It works, it's super safe, it's not gonna come undone, even though it's not gonna come undone anyways. But, say that I wanted to do a Yosemite tie-off. Okay, there's my bowline. line. Strands going into the middle. And now all I'm doing is I'm going to trace this back and feed this into here. So now what you can see here, what I got going on is I got, I got the, it coming from the middle, going around the outside, and I'm just tracing this here back down this way. <clears throat> and that's the Yosemite tie off. So very similar um, to kind of a double bowl line. Uh, you know, there's obviously different ways of doing things, but this here is kind of the way that I always tie it off. It's just easy, it's easy to untie, it's easy to tie. Um, but the key point is making sure that the tail is on the inside loop of the bowline, not the outside. If it's on the outside, your only option is to tie the fisherman's knot or the barrel knot, whatever you wanna call it. Um, but if you're on the inside, you can either tie the fisherman knot or do the Yosemite tie off. All right, so that is the bowline. All right, well, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning into today's episode. I hope you got something out of it. Um, I know that I'm super biased about this knot, and I think that everyone should know how to tie this knot. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, on the inside or the outside. It doesn't really matter to me, but this knot is so user-friendly and so useful for everything that we do. Now, at the end of the day, it is still not a requirement for IRATA to know the bowline, but... From a training center perspective and bang for your buck, I think that it would be advantageous for all training centers globally to just start that motion and just start training people, show people more knots. At the end of the day, people look upon the rope access industry as like the gurus of rope access. We do it every day. It's in our name. We should know how to do things. But I'm very surprised by how many people do not know how to tie a bowline or a clove hitch or whatever. Um, 
because obviously at the end of the day, we are showing a certain syllabus, not everything we can't, there's not enough time to teach everything. That's just the way it is. But this knot here is so user friendly and so useful. It's almost doing a disservice to the technicians if we are not showing people how to tie this knot and how to use it. Um, but you know, that's just my personal opinion. Now, at the end of the day, you know, if you like this content, like this video, make sure to show your support by hitting the like button. Subscribe as is down here in the bottom right hand corner, the bell for notifications as I put out new content every Sunday. And until next time.